What's up everyone, it's Dave Mack and I'm back with another video on Overbridge and this time I'm going to show you how to set things up in Ableton Live because I saw a lot of people on forums asking is there a video or is there uh, an instruction how to set it up in Ableton Live so I thought I'd do a quick video and show you how so let's just dive right into it let's begin with setting up the dig attacks so first you want to go to the settings, system, USB config and put the dig attack in overbridge mode. Then uh, put the pre-post fader in post because then you'll record the level settings in your dig attack to your DAW. Then we're going over to Ableton Live and we're going to choose plugins. Then we will see Electron 64-bit and we will see the dig attack there. We're dragging it into the clip view and there we have it. So, ta-da! When I play sounds, uh, it will output to the MIDI track. So we record the MIDI track uh, as audio as well to record the main output of the dig attack, which we can use to record the sound effects if we mute each individual track from the main output. If you want to see how I do that, check out my last video. I explain it there in detail. So. To actually route each of the eight tracks to Ableton Live, we're going to add an audio track. There we go. And we're going to choose audio from Digitect. You see it here. Bam. And at the second drop down, we're going to choose track one through eight. And that's it, really. Put it in, in, and I play something. You can see the kick coming in right now. So I'm actually going to duplicate this by pressing Ctrl D. Four, five, six, seven, eight times. Then we're gonna. Then I'm gonna go ahead and choose track two, track three, four, five, six, and seven and eight. There we go. And now you can see I can output every. One thing I want to say is that the input coming into Ableton is actually pretty low. Let me tell you that's totally fine because um, my tip would be to actually work at m around minus 12 dB anyway because it leaves a lot of headroom at the master output so that m makes working on your tracks in the beginning way easier because you don't have to watch your levels as much because when you have two instrument, mon part, instrument parts that overlap each other in frequency they will boost each other and well you have enough like 12 dB left on your main output for that to happen without worrying about it too much. If you do want to boost everything you can always uh, use the utility plugin by Ableton to boost the signal. Uh, I wouldn't recommend it but you can do it. Another thing I want to show you is how to record every knob movement into Ableton. To do that you actually need to add the parameters, all the parameters. You want to tweak live and record. So uh, to do that, going to the Digitech MIDI channel, click this arrow and it will show us the configure um, button. To add plugin parameters to this panel, click the configure button. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna put, uh, put it in configure mode and actually going to move knobs. Here we go. You can do this for each track. That's of course one thing to understand is that if you want to record the MIDI of your knob movements, every every parameter, uh, it's, it's going to be a lot of parameters you're going to add here. Uh, that's just how it works. The Digitech just has eight tracks with a lot of parameters, so that's a lot of parameters you have to put in here to uh, record. So my advice would be to beforehand think about which parameters you're going to tweak. Yeah, just set it up once. Set that up, you can save it as a default configuration so you can reuse it later. So now I can tweak stuff. Make sure you disable configure mode and then go, go nuts. All right, so let's see if I recorded that. And if we uh, add the envelope here, 
we can see it recorded my movements. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope uh, it helped somehow to set things up in Ableton. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments, of course. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more videos. I definitely have very cool videos on Overbridge Plant and other cool videos as well. So keep an eye on my channel and I'll see you soon. Cheers.